Hello! Welcome back to Elise Reads and Speaks on this eighth day of Vlogmas. Today I am doing a nice short video about one of my favorite tropes, okay? You have heard me mention it before, and this is the bachelor trope, all right? I am a part of Bachelor Nation. I am not ashamed. I love The Bachelor, I love The Bachelorette, and I love the all-star crew in Bachelor in Paradise. I love it. And when I see this as a setup in a book, I have to pick it up. I have to. So I just made a quick little list of six books with The Bachelor set up in case you are also interested in this trope so you will know some things to pick up if you haven't already read them. So I'm starting off with the most popular one that you've probably heard of before. This is The Selection by Kira Cass. This one, a long beloved book among the YA book community. All right, I'm right there with you. I love this book. It's like The Bachelor meets Hunger Games. It's so great. All right, so in this one, the prince of whatever place that they live in is whittling down these, these ladies and he will end up with one. They're all from different casts. And from what I remember in this series, each cast has a specialty. I remember the cast that um, America is from in here. Yeah, <laughs> that is cheesy. Her name is America. But I remember the cast that she's from um, excels in music. Okay, but if you're a member of like a different tier, like I think she was number five, if you're a member from a member from number four or number six, like even if you like music, that can't be your specialty. I believe the lower cast ones were kind of like cleaning or there's the undesirables that were in the lowest cast that were not even chosen to go to the castle to compete for Maxon. Most people um, that are sent to the castle to compete for him are like from cast two or three. And being that she was from five, she was kind of looked down on because she was a little further below. All right, the only people that belong in the, the one, the realm of the one, are the royal family. But in this, it's not just um, whittling down to the women to one. There's also some uh, unrest that's happening between the caste system. Like there's a rebellion that's happening because they don't like being looked down on and downtrodden just based on what they were born into, which I mean, I get it. I get it. I will say with this, this is a, a very, very serious PSA. Okay. I want you to read this book. I want you to read the next one, Elite. I want you to read the one after that, the one. And then I want you to stop. Okay. There are two more, um, the air and the crown. I don't even remember which order they're in, if it's the crown and then the air or the air and then the crown, but it's, it's after the original trilogy and it's about the daughter and then the daughter whittling down her men to one. I know that sounds interesting, but the pacing was completely different than these original books. And there's not the same like unrest in the, the kingdom. And because of that, it just came off as really flat. I felt the daughter came off as um, very snotty, honestly. And I, I was just kind of bummed by it. Like, you know, we went through all this with the original three books and this is the kid that you have uh, let down. So I'm telling you, if you have not picked up these books yet, read the selection, the elite, the one, and then stop. Don't do it to yourself. Just stop right there. Next on my list is actually a book that I talked about yesterday. This is The Jasmine Project by Meredith Ireland. This is the one where the main girl breaks up with her crappy boyfriend, her family throws a bunch of suitors into her way. Well, I say a bunch, it's only like three. She doesn't realize that her family has put these men in her way and she's dating each one of them and she's kind of like whittling down which one she wants to end up with. The whole time that this is happening, her family has a group text going on about which suitor they want to prevail and her sister who also has a well-known podcast about The Bachelor starts broadcasting about her sister's journey finding her ultimate bachelor. So again, I've talked about it, not gonna spend that much time on it, but this was a good one. Next on my list is One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This one was so sweet. Like I gave this one five stars. I really enjoyed it. It has fat representation in here and she is the one that is going on the dates with all the men. So they are competing for her. And it deals with a lot in here, like noticing how somebody is on the inside instead of just what they look like on the outside. Um, some men that are on her show are clearly not there for her and are there for fame because they don't actually want to date her. Like there was just some good stuff in here. And I remember the thing that I enjoyed most was actually the mixed media presentation. It's not just a novel. Like there are text messages, there are emails, there are interviews. Like it, it was just a whole mixed media thing that really got me into the show, the fictional show that was in this book. Complete bachelor setup. This was a home run for me. I loved this. 
So going off the same representation, but in a different format is If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. So in this one, instead of having one girl going on a date with a bunch of guys, there is one guy dating a bunch of girls and the girl that is the, the main one in this story, she's the one with the, the fat representation. And it also has like a, a Cinderella vibe to it. Like there's a lot that goes on with the, the step sisters and the stepmother, but it's not a bad relationship. Like you would expect a regular Cinderella story to have the evil stepmother and the evil stepsisters, but they actually seem to be on her side, like rooting for her to do well. Like I really enjoyed that. And this was another story about like self-discovery and she's getting to the end. She's like, you know, is this who I'm fighting for? Or am I fighting for myself? What do I want most for myself? I really enjoyed this one too. I think I gave this one five stars also. As you can see, I really love The Bachelor setup. It seems to work very well for me. <laughs> Next on my list, I'm going for For the Crown by Melissa Mitchell. This is a very little known book, but this was a gem. I really enjoyed it. I believe it's part of her Dragon Wall series or Dragon Wall realm. Okay, because this was the first in a specific series. I hope that she pops out more, but she hasn't since then. And in this one, it is it is a princess, you know, weeding out suitors to find her one, but it's dragons. Okay, so they have like a, a human form, but they can also go into their dragon form. And to find out like who her person is, she has to like go over and touch them in their dragon form to see if she has the feelings. That's what I picture it looks like. Like, all right, so she goes around touching all these different dragons to see if they're her person. But before that happens, you know, there are like trials that they need to go through to kind of prove their worthiness. And if she thinks they're worthy, like she'll give them a shot. Um, and you know, by the end she falls in love because that's the bachelor bachelorette setup. But I just like that this one put a different spin on it. It wasn't just men competing for a woman, like they are competing to be the king of this whole dragon kingdom. But she also gets a say because she is also a dragon and her dragon Dragon needs to recognize its mate in somebody else. Ah, love it, love it. And my last pick, which you have heard me talking about so much this year, but I'm staying with the paranormal theme, and that is Hitched by G.K. DeRosa. Oh my gosh, guys, I loved this series. I gave every single one five stars. Is it the best written thing in the history of the universe? No, but it was so fun, it was so fun. So it combines like the reality show aspect and the paranormal aspect. So this girl is put on a television show and she has all these people competing for her heart. She doesn't realize at first that all of these men are supernatural in some form. Like there is an elf prince, there's an angel, a gargoyle, there are dragons, like all these different supernatural characters. It's not just like a bunch of vampires, you know? But she also doesn't know going into it that these are the people that, can, that are competing for her. There's like one episode reveal where she finds out, you know, this person is this thing, this person is this thing. And it's like, oh, okay, will you still let them compete for your heart or are you scared? And clearly, you know, she's not scared, okay? We need to get to the end of the story. We need to see who she picks. She's not scared, all right? This book was lovely. And I saw that this author has like offshoot series about um, a school, like a magical school that derives because of this show, which I will definitely, definitely read in 2022. So that is just a short list of books, six books that have the bachelor, bachelorette theme. If you are like me and you are a part of Bachelor Nation and you love to read it in your books, I hope you give one of these a try if you haven't already. Thank you for tuning in to Elise Reads and Speaks on this eighth day of Vlogmas, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye.